Meta has released their latest models, the Llama 4 family, and coming with it is a 10 million token context window. So just how big a deal is this? Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief. Some exciting new model announcements to close out the end of last week. On Friday, Meta revealed their new Llama 4 family of models. As is the case every time Meta announces a new set of models, there is a lot to dig into here. These models feature all new architecture, including multimodal functionality for the first time. The models are the first to utilize the mixture of experts architecture that most recently has been seen in DeepSeek. It's an architecture that allows the models to access a subset of parameters within a larger model, making inference more efficient. The Llama 4 family includes three different models. Llama 4 Scout is a 17 billion parameter model with 16 experts, which Meta claims is the quote, best multimodal model in the world in its class and is more powerful than all previous generation Llama models while fitting in a single NVIDIA H100 GPU. Llama 4 Maverick has the same 17 billion active parameters, but includes 128 experts, basically meaning it's a total of 400 billion parameters. Meta states that the model is the, quote, best multimodal model in its class, beating GPT-40 and Gemini 2.0 Flash across a broad range of widely reported benchmarks, while achieving comparable results to the new DeepSeek V3 on reasoning and coding, at less than half the active parameters. Llama 4 Behemoth is still in training. It's set to feature 288 billion active parameters with 16 experts for a total of 2 trillion parameters. So Meta here is taking the same strategy that they did with Llama 3, which is release a couple of the smaller models early to get people excited, and then release the biggest version of the model a couple months later. Now, when it comes to Llama 4 Behemoth, this will be the first time a model has reached into the trillions of parameters that we know for sure and the first mixture of experts model of this size, so we don't really know how model performance will be affected. Looking at costs, Llama 4 seems to be pretty competitive. Inference service provider Grok has the hosted model available already. Scout costs 11 cents per million input tokens and 34 cents per million output tokens, while Maverick's prices are 50 cents and 77 cents per million for input and output respectively. In that, both models undercut DeepSeek Gemini 2.0 Flash and Quen's QWQ32B. When it comes to benchmarks, the new models look comparable to their peers. Scout outperforms models like Mistral 3.1, Gemini 2.0 Flash Lite, and Gemma 3 on some benchmarks, while Maverick beats out GPT-40 and Gemini 2.0 Flash on most multimodal reasoning benchmarks. Notably, neither of those models are a true reasoning model utilizing chain of thought or test time compute. Now, one thing that's really important to note is the context into which Llama 4 is entering. A couple months ago, we got this leak from inside the company, which claimed that the Meta Gen AI organization was in panic mode. The leaker wrote, It started with DeepSeek V3, which rendered the Llama 4 already behind in benchmarks. Adding insult to injury was the unknown Chinese company with 5.5 million training budget. Engineers are moving frantically to dissect DeepSeek and copying anything and everything we can from it. I'm not even exaggerating. Management is worried about justifying the massive cost of the Gen AI org. How would they face the leadership when every single leader of Gen AI org is making more than what it costs to train DeepSeek V3 entirely, and we have dozens of such leaders? DeepSeek R1 made things even scarier. I can't reveal confidential info, but it'll soon be public anyways. It should have been an engineering-focused small organization, but since a bunch of people wanted to join the impact grab and artificially inflate hiring in the org, everyone loses. So this was the type of report that we were getting behind the scenes. And in the wake of these announcements, there is a lot of discussion about the feeling that maybe this release was rushed, and that there might even be something more nefarious than that going on. Min Choi writes, yikes, Llama 4 benchmarks looked insane, but something feels off. Reddit leak claims Meta cooked it. In the 24 hours following the announcement, as people started to dig in, they seemed to be finding a fairly big difference in output between what Meta was claiming and what seemed to be the reality. TechCrunch writes, Researchers on X have observed stark differences in the behavior of the publicly downloadable Maverick compared to the model hosted on LM Arena. The LM Arena version seems to use a lot of emojis and give incredibly long-winded answers. Even more concerning was a Reddit post from someone who claimed that they were a Meta engineer. The post they shared said this, Despite repeated training efforts, the internal model's performance still falls short of open-source state-of-the-art benchmarks, lagging significantly behind. Company leadership suggested blending test sets from various benchmarks during the post-training process, aiming to meet the targets across various metrics and produce a presentable result. Presentable in air quotes. Failure to achieve this goal by the end of April deadline would lead to dire consequences. Following yesterday's release of Llama 4, many users on X and Reddit have already reported extremely poor real-world test results. As someone currently in academia, I find this approach utterly unacceptable. Consequently, I have submitted my resignation and explicitly requested that my name be excluded from the technical report of Llama 4. Notably, the VP of AI at Meta also resigned for similar reasons. There have been a lot of people referencing this post without a ton of verification yet. Bernie Tech wrote, 
Llama 4 gamed benchmarks so hard LMAO, completely out of touch with reality and practice. Andrew Allen summed it up this way. He wrote, Meta just dropped Llama 4 and scored number two on LM Arena, beating GPT-40 and Grok, but users are calling it garbage and vaporware. Let's unpack the biggest benchmark controversy of 2025 so far. The numbers look incredible on paper. 10 million token context window, 1417 ELO score on LM Arena, the second highest, beating many top closed models. But something doesn't add up when users actually try it. He pointed to a tweet from Harsh Varden that writes, tried out Meta's Llama 4 for coding-related tasks, found it super basic and almost useless. DDoS from Menlo Ventures writes, Llama 4 seems to be actually a poor model for coding. ELO maxing on LM Arena doesn't create the best models. Back to Andrew, he continues, the disconnect is stark. On paper, second highest on LM Arena leaderboard, in practice, super basic and almost useless for coding. Marketed revolutionary capabilities, reality struggling with basic instruction following. The most serious allegation, Meta may have submitted a different model for benchmarks than what's publicly available. This raises major questions about benchmark integrity. User reports highlight specific failures, freezing when run locally on Max, poor coding capabilities compared to Claude and GPT, inability to follow instructions consistently, declining quality with longer contexts. Many users are calling the 10 million token context window marketing fluff that doesn't translate to better performance. And we'll be coming back to that 10 million token context window in just a minute. But Andrew also points out there are bright spots. It's fast, 512 tokens per second on Grok, cost-effective, improved vision capabilities over Llama 3, and open source enabling community innovation. Ultimately, he writes, what this reveals about AI development, benchmark scores do not equal real-world utility, the gap between lab performance and practical use is widening, and users increasingly value reliability over raw specs. Obviously, we'll get a lot more information in the days to come, and even if there hasn't been nefarious behavior here, there's still some pretty big gaps between the marketing promise and what people are actually finding in practice. Outside of all of that dubiousness, the big point of discussion and the thing that has everyone's mind racing is that Llama 4 Scout theoretically features a 10 million token context window. Until now, Google's development of a functional million token context window for their Gemini models was state of the art. It was five times as large as the same class of models from OpenAI and Anthropic. Now, ultra-long context windows are a really big deal for a variety of use cases. For example, for coding assistants. The longer the context window, the more a coding assistant is able to ingest an entire code base to be understood all at once. For agents, long context allows for much longer tasks to be completed before losing coherence. Meta demonstrated the performance with a retrieval needle in a haystack test across 10 million lines of code. Scout didn't have a single failure across their testing. Now, independent benchmarks weren't anywhere near as impressive. And yet still in this case, most of the conversation wasn't so much about Meta and Llama 4 specifically, but about what the implications are as the tech improves. Representing around a million variants on this take, Marvin Aziz, the community manager at Lindy wrote, Rag is dead. Why bother with a knowledge base when you can shove 10 million tokens into a context window and call it a day? Rag, of course, refers to retrieval augmented generation, which is the process of hooking up an LLM to a database or knowledge source to search up any information it might need. Then again, the opposite take was just as prolific, with AI evaluations designer Hamal Hussein writing, Rag is dead posts are annoying AF. R is retrieval and AG is the LLM. This means you think retrieval is dead. Seriously, you think retrieval is dead? Keyword search, metadata filtering like dates and users, grep and other filtering are retrieval. Good luck without retrieval. Charles Fry writes, Rag is dead is also the sort of thing only said by someone who has never run LLM inference themselves, let alone been on the hook for cost and latency. Enigmatically, Swix writes, Unpopular opinion right now, but Llama 4's 10 million token window will finally actually end the long context versus rag debate, but not the way the other guy is thinking. For those trying to tow a more middle of the line, they basically point out that we just don't know enough yet to declare the end of rag or really understand how well long context windows are going to work. Nir Cyan wrote, I haven't played with the Llama 4 series, but needle in a haystack is woefully insufficient to know the strength of a context window. If you want needle in a haystack, we have grep for that. Grep is a Linux command for searching databases. OpenAI co-founder Andre Karpathy falls into the category of wanting to believe, adding, My reaction too when reading all the rag is dead tweets earlier today. Huge amount of optimism that the context window is also usable in practice for real problem solving and not just in theory. Could very well be true, I just don't super know. Now, the community with the most enthusiasm about an ultra-long context window was the vibe coders. Plain game creator Peter Levels wrote, This is insane and makes it finally possible to vibe code up to giant code sizes. The limit just weeks ago was context window. AI would get lost once your vibe-coded game or app became too big. Imagine an AI with memory loss that starts breaking stuff. With 10 million tokens, there's practically no limit. Really quite big for vibe-coding and another big hit for the perpetual naysayers. AI consultant Sasha Lekti added, 
At this point, you can throw the entire documentation of multiple libraries with examples and your project into the context window, and it will handle tasks in one shot. In my opinion, the bottleneck now lies more on the agentic side. These systems need to operate without me babysitting them. Still, there were many trying to harsh the vibes with practical issues of using a 10 million token context window. They assumed that loading that many tokens would be painfully slow, and questioned whether a Gemini 2.0 flashlight class model would be up to the task of generating functional code. Developer Nick Dobos rebutted, Lazy take. Use it to ask questions and plan. Use the high-tier models to write the actual code. Not hard. His point being that even if the model isn't really up to writing code or even developing a plan, simply creating an outline of a large code base for use in another LLM is a new feature that hasn't previously been accessible. LinkedIn co-founder Reid Hoffman had a less combative take, posting, Spending the day playing with Llama 4. One of the many interesting things, the massive context window is a game changer. I don't think it's the end of RAG, but for a surprising number of workflows, the long context alone is enough. And I think this is an important point. Ultra-long context doesn't have to be perfect or completely replace RAG to be a really big deal. To the extent that it holds up at all, this feature could unlock a huge range of functionality that wasn't possible before. Orchestration platform Oblix commented that this is just one tool in future workflow design, writing, Long context doesn't replace RAG, but it absolutely shifts the trade-offs. For structured contained workflows like contracts, single docs, or chat history, context alone is simpler, faster, and good enough. RAG still shines when you need external dynamic or filtered retrieval. The future probably blends both. Long context for memory, RAG for knowledge access, orchestrators for choosing the best tool in real time. Matthew Berman zoomed out even more. While noting a ton of Llama 4 shortcomings, he added, here's the strategic insight that everyone's missing. Meta's 10 million token context window isn't about today's performance. It's about signaling tomorrow's direction. They're showing us a future where AI doesn't just retrieve knowledge, but transforms your entire knowledge base into manipulable working memory. Zuckerberg understands the truth Google accidentally leaked. Closed source AI has no moat. Foundation models are becoming commodities faster than anyone predicted, and Meta is accelerating this transformation. Meta's strategy becomes clear when you connect the dots. Commoditize foundation models through open source, make context the new competitive battleground, force innovation up the application layer, leverage their massive social graph advantage, and ultimately create an open ecosystem where social and application data become the true moats. Still, at the end of the day, as much as they are helping shape the conversation, it's hard not to view this release so far as a disappointment. Professor Ethan Malik even commented that their flagship model doesn't stack up, writing, Looks like even Llama Behemoth doesn't come that close to Gemini 2.5. So no open model parity with the state-of-the-art and close models. We will see what happens when people slap a reasoner on Llama, though. Doesn't seem like they're launching with one. And indeed, this was another common take. Andre Burkhoff writes, If today's disappointing release of Llama 4 tells us something, it's that even 30 trillion training tokens and 2 trillion parameters doesn't make your non-reasoning model better than small reasoning models. Model and data size scaling are over. And so as we wrap up here, I'm not yet exactly sure what to make of this. On the one hand, it feels a little rushed. It does seem like the deep seek pressure is getting to meta. At the same time, given that they are taking an open strategy, the consequences of releasing early are a little bit less severe for them than perhaps for other companies. If it's cost-effective, better than some of the things that people had access to before, there's still going to be a lot of developers building on it. Indeed, holding aside wanting every single model to break the mold every single time, ultimately for developers, this just represents another set of choices, which in a very fast-moving environment is nothing but a good thing. For now, though, that is going to do it for today's AI Daily Brief. Appreciate you listening or watching as always, and until next time, peace.